In this podcast episode, Melissa Kearney discusses the impact of single-parent households on American society. She talks about her book titled The Two-Parent Advantage, How Americans Stopped Getting Married and Started Falling Behind, and the response she has received to it. Kearney explains that the response to her book has been mostly positive, with many people acknowledging the validity of her arguments. She mentions that people who work in communities affected by the decline in two-parent families have been particularly supportive of her work. They see her book as a way of describing their reality and putting it in a broader social context. However, Kearney also acknowledges that there have been some negative reactions to her book, particularly from those who view the decline in marriage as an outdated concern. She emphasizes that her intention is not to judge or criticize single parents, but rather to highlight the advantages of two-parent households and the negative consequences of the decline in marriage. Kearney provides historical context by explaining that in the 1960s and 1970s, there was a major social and cultural revolution that led to a decline in marriage across all education and income levels. However, in the subsequent four decades, there has been a divergence between the college-educated class, who continue to marry and raise children in two-parent homes, and everyone else, who have seen an increase in single-parent households and non-marital childbearing. She clarifies that the decline in marriage is not driven by an increase in divorce rates, but rather by a reduction in marriage rates and an increase in non-marital childbearing. Kearney argues that there has been a decoupling of marriage from the act of having and raising children, which has led to the rise in single-parent households. Kearney attributes the decline in marriage to economic factors, such as the reduction in stable, well-paying jobs for non-college educated adults, particularly men. She argues that economic shocks, such as globalization and technological developments, have disproportionately affected non-college educated adults, leading to a decrease in marriage rates and an increase in single-parent households. She also acknowledges that there are societal challenges, such as unstable employment, criminal histories, and substance abuse, that contribute to the difficulties faced by single parents. Kearney believes that these challenges make it harder for individuals to form and maintain stable relationships and marriages. Kearney emphasizes the importance of marriage for the well-being of children. She cites research that shows children from two-parent households have better outcomes in terms of poverty, education, and future earnings. She also highlights the negative consequences of single-parent households, such as higher rates of school suspensions and involvement with the criminal justice system. Kearney acknowledges that there are societal and cultural biases against promoting marriage as the ideal family structure. She mentions an article that argues for the acceptance of alternative family structures and criticizes the societal preference for nuclear families. However, she counters this argument by stating that the data clearly shows the benefits of two-parent households for children. She also discusses the importance of fathers in the household, particularly for boys. Research shows that boys from single-parent households receive less investment and nurturing parenting, which can lead to behavioral issues and involvement with the criminal justice system. Kearney emphasizes the need to break the cycle of single-parent households and the negative consequences it has on future generations. Kearney emphasizes that the differences in outcomes for children from single-parent households compared to those from two-parent households are significant. She argues that if unmarried parents could provide the same stability and resources as married parents, there would be no reason to expect different outcomes. However, the reality is that unmarried parents often face challenges in providing the necessary support and investment in their children. The discussion also touches on the role of step-parents, with Kearney noting that step-parent situations can be complicated and often do not provide the same level of stability and support as two married biological parents. She cites research showing that children living with step-parents are at a higher risk of mortality, sexual abuse, and lack of regular health care compared to those living with their biological parents. The conversation then delves into the impact of single-parent households on inequality between different groups over time. 
Kearney explains that earnings have increased among college-educated workers, leading to a widening income gap between households with married parents and those with single parents. She highlights that the decline in marriage rates and the increase in single-parent households have eroded the economic security of the middle class, contributing to the feeling of economic hardship among this group. Kearney also addresses the compounding effects of single-parent households on various social issues. She acknowledges that it is challenging to quantify the exact percentage of problems that stem from single-parent households but emphasizes that the risks of criminality, mental health issues, physical health problems, and mood disorders are all elevated among children from single-parent households. The conversation then shifts to the relationship between marriage rates and birth rates. Kearney explains that the decline in marriage rates has contributed to a reduction in fertility rates, particularly among unmarried women. She notes that while birth rates among women over 30 have increased, the overall trend is a decrease in fertility rates across all age groups under 30. Kearney suggests that changing attitudes towards adult priorities, such as prioritizing careers and leisure time, may be contributing to the decline in birth rates. The podcast also touches on the cultural and societal factors influencing the decline in marriage and birth rates. Kearney mentions the prevalence of social media content promoting the idea that not having children is preferable and the potential impact of these messages on young women's decisions. She also discusses the role of economic factors and the need to improve the economic viability of men outside the college-educated sector to restore the promise of marriage. In terms of interventions, Kearney suggests a combination of economic policies and efforts to restore the social norm of two-parent families. She emphasizes the importance of investing in programs that strengthen families, such as relationship classes for unmarried parents and support for families with incarcerated parents. Kearney also calls for a shift in policy priorities, with more funding allocated to programs aimed at promoting stable and safe families. Kearney continues by explaining that single-parent households have become increasingly common in recent decades, with around 25% of children in the United States being raised by a single parent. She highlights the negative effects of single-parent households on children, including lower educational attainment, higher rates of poverty, and increased likelihood of engaging in risky behaviors. The discussion then shifts to the economic implications of single-parent households. Kearney explains that single-parent households often face financial challenges, as they typically have lower incomes and fewer resources compared to two-parent households. This can lead to a cycle of poverty, as children from single-parent households are more likely to grow up in disadvantaged circumstances and face economic hardships in adulthood. Kearney also addresses the gender dynamics of single-parent households. She notes that single motherhood is more common than single fatherhood, and that women are disproportionately affected by the economic and social consequences of raising children alone. She emphasizes the need for policies and programs that support single mothers and provide them with the resources and opportunities necessary to improve their economic situation. The conversation then turns to the role of marriage in addressing the issue of single parent households. Kearney argues that promoting marriage is not the solution, as people are not actively rejecting the idea of marriage. Instead, she suggests focusing on helping individuals achieve their goals and aspirations in life, which may include marriage and stable relationships. Kearney highlights the importance of supportive family programs and equal gender norms in creating an environment where individuals feel empowered to have children and form stable families. The podcast also touches on the topic of declining birth rates in high-income countries, including those in Scandinavia. Kearney mentions the work of Stephen Shaw, who found that many childless mothers did not intend to be childless. She acknowledges that life circumstances, such as delayed partner finding, longer education, and career pursuits, can squeeze the fertility window and contribute to lower birth rates. However, she expresses uncertainty about the interpretation of surveys on this topic and emphasizes the need for further research. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe.